night, I looked at the audience, it's overwhelmingly African American. Mm -hmm. For someone to tell me that I'm not aware that I'm talking to an African American audience, it's just not real. <laughs> if I'm speaking tomorrow night in Staten Island, yeah. and I'm talking to an all white audience, mm -hmm. if I don't say in my head, I'm talking to a white audience, mm -hmm. it's not real. The real test is, do I give the same speech here as I give the speech tomorrow? Yeah. Now most of our politicians, they pander. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of pandering that's already going on about this case. Mm -hmm. They aren't strong enough we're willing enough to be honest about race. Yeah. Until we get to the point that we're honest about race, I think all of us, including myself, have prejudice in our heads because that's our society. The question becomes, how do you deal with that? And do you deal with it across the board equally? I gotta work on it every hour, almost every minute of the day. So when people say to me, I don't remember Rudy Giuliani, I went to law school with him, he was creepier in law school than he was as a mayor. <laughs> and Giuliani would say, I'm colorblind. <laughs> what did Rachel say last night on that Pierce Morgan? BS. I mean, the point is that we've got to get to the point of putting on the table where we come from, the baggage we have, yeah. because if we don't do that, we can never overcome or realistically ameliorate the racial stereotyping that goes on. They should have brought in experts. There's a great African-American woman professor at Harvard Law School who was doing a major piece on subconscious bias. Mm -hmm. The fact that people have in their head subconscious, they see things. Mm -hmm. When Zimmerman saw Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. he not only saw race, right. he saw right. class. Right. Right. If Trayvon Martin was wearing a suit shirt and tie, Maybe the interaction would have been different. Right, yeah, yeah. So why isn't there even a discussion about class? <laughs>